A while back, I did a first time listen and reaction to Face It Alone, a new Queen song. Great song, by the way. But I didn't really address the elephant in the room. They auto-tuned Freddie Mercury. Yes, that's right. The most iconic virtuoso rock singer of all time. I guess if you're gonna keep up with the times in modern music production, every singer, no matter how good they are, has to have auto-tune on it, or... Believe it or not, there's a bigger problem here than the fact that Freddie Mercury's voice has been attacked by pitch correction. And interestingly enough, we're gonna use the tool that enabled the crime to expose the problem. These red lines represent the tracked pitch in this section of Face It Alone. Notice how dead on they are, particularly the beginnings or the attacks of a lot of these notes, like this longer one here. And look at this slide up. You see, that is not a natural way the voice moves. Once you see it and hear it, you can't really unhear it. Hey, listen. Your cries can be heard so loud and clear. Did you feel how this note was sort of jerked into place? You can really hear it in the isolated vocals. Listen again. You cries can. It's too accurate. Cry. Like it, it. Like I can't do that with my voice. Neither can Freddie. Although his pitch historically is very good, and also how little pitch variance there is along particularly the first part of these notes. It is so dead on. And you might be saying, "Well, he's just that good. He can sing really on pitch. He is Freddie Mercury, after all." Well. Let's take a look at a much earlier recording and you will see the truth. This is an isolated vocal excerpt from Love of My Life. The red markings are what Freddie actually sang in relationship to these lines, which are the dead on pitch. There's the note, there's the very center of the pitch. The blue lines are what Autotune, the artificial intelligence inside Autotune, has done to Freddie's voice. Now this is just the the auto. This isn't, I haven't gone in and drawn any lines. This is what the auto-tune software decided to do when I told it to auto pitch correct. Likely the tuning done on Face It Alone was much more surgically executed. I'm going to first play this sample without the tuning. Don't take it away from me because you don't know what it means to me. Notice you hear and see in the red the scoops, and especially on that last me, you hear the vibrato and his pitch just kind of going up and down and around. It's very imprecise, but it's desperate. It's, it's full of emotion. It's full of vulnerability. And his pitch sounds fine. Now, here it is with the auto pitch correction fully on. Listen to the quality of these notes, the approach, the attack, this beautiful musical scoop that, that Freddie did here is, is gone. Uh, the, the pitches get centered on 100% accurate much more quickly. And listen what happens to the end vibrato on me. It sounds a lot more like what we heard on the vibrato from Face It Alone. Don't take it away from me because you don't know what it means to me. Ah, it turns you sideways a little bit. The pitch is too on on that vulnerable ending of that vibrato. And that's part of what we hear in the vibrato on Face Alone. Can be heard. Also, the way Freddie moves between the notes with that unnatural slide on Face It Alone is similar. And the way he attacks notes is similar to what we heard and saw on what? What it means to me. It's really, really obvious. Here it is without the pitch correction. What it means to me. Me, right? And then what? What it what? Very nice natural musical scoop up. And then here it is with the pitch correction fully on. What it means to me. The relationship of the pitch variation caused by vibrato and his natural formant or tone feels off, subtly off with the pitch corrected version in much of the same way Face It Alone feels sort of riddled with when we listen, e even in isolation or even the full mix. Lots of us have been listening to Freddie Mercury for decades. So when tuning shows up, you kind of go, 
oh, something's not right. But auto-tuning, not because it exists, but because of the way it has been used and abused, has been sneakily taking over genuine vocal expression now for the past 25 years, and it's getting worse, as evidenced by the fact that someone felt the need to auto-tune Freddie Mercury. And he's not the only one. Someone jacked up Michael Jackson's voice with auto-tune a little while back as well. Not only does this do a huge disservice to the original art in and of itself, but it really messes with our minds. We don't know how much we don't know when it comes to when tuning is used. And so when we hear modern vocalists with modern vocal production, we are misled in two ways. Number one, Oh, whoa! That was an amazing vocal performance! Never mind that it was edited meticulously and the pitch, some of the pitches were faked or manipulated so much that it's not a representation of what that artist can really do. Would you sing something for them without auto-tune so yeah, we yeah. know what um, T-Pain sounds like? And then, here's the problem. It's not so much that it's not a representation of what they can do, and that's the problem in and of itself. It's that we look at that as artists and singers and go, man, I could never be that good. And the standard is just messed up in a really unhealthy way. Or the other massive problem, tuning is used in a really obvious way, like Cher or T-Pain, on vocalists that really can sing, but we, as a, as a public, as an audience, as fans of music, over time, get girl, desensitized and become less appreciative of genuine emotional connection and expression. And then when it comes to producing our own art, we rely to an unhealthy degree on these technology crutches and band-aids and turd polishers. We never fully realize and fully explore our own voice, our own artistic expressions because, ah, the technology can make it good enough. So what can we do about it? Well, first of all, make sure that you're listening to a wide range of musical genres and time periods. Anything before about 1998 isn't going to have tuning on it the way that we have it today. Don't be looking for perfection. And with your own voice and musically artistic pursuits, sing it or play it till you get it right. Use digital recording regularly as a way to improve your craft, not as a way to fix it. And most importantly, as a singer, do not pursue pitch. Do not say anymore, oh, I have a pitch problem. I, I can't hit the pitches I want to. I can't hit the notes. My pitch just isn't that good. Don't say it. Don't think it. Don't act on it. <sighs> Instead, think about your voice as a mechanism for genuine expression, a way to communicate emotion and genuine vulnerability. Choose a simple, well-known, maybe even folksy type melody. Sing it completely a cappella, and don't worry about hitting the right pitches. Instead, get fully engaged in the dynamics of your performance. How quiet and intimate you can be. How loud and explosive and angry you can be. Make this something you do regularly. Get in touch with the expressiveness of your voice, not the accuracy of it. We will lead the charge in the battle for true human expression through the voice. If you want more help being a better singer, finding out what it means to use your voice correctly so that you can express yourself in a genuine way, Click the link below and join my free voice course. And if you want to see how Autotune jacked up Michael Jackson's voice, check out this video. I'm the one. Ugh, ugh. And you hear this all the time in modern music.